Hi. I like to be able to plane pieces of wood like this real thin for some of my boxes that I make. And I like to try try to do this with a hand plane. So I'm going to make a, a jig and uh, see how that helps. Here's a sketch I created that will be my guideposts for uh, this experiment. I'm going to use this chunk of poplar that I found in my uh, stockpile and um, cut a chunk off here, uh, joint it, plant it, and um, come back to the bench and start making this jig. Okay, so you can see how this is shaping up. These rails are going to be raised above the surface, plane surface, and uh, the plane will ride on the rails. Unfortunately, when I was cutting this off, the first piece, the back end pulled away from the rip fence, so I got a nice uh, taper. So I had to rip some more off the black. So this is now smaller than my plane, so I'm going to have to uh, glue on some spacers on this piece. And uh, It's an experiment, and if it works good, maybe I'll make a prettier one in the future. We'll see. Unfortunately, when I glued these uh, side spacers on and I had pinned them to prevent them from moving, when I clamped them, they did, they did move. And I really want to have a, an even reveal along the, the full length. Um, just for aesthetics, it has no structural importance.
there. That's a much nicer look. Okay, I'm ready to attach the, the sides, and these are going to be moving up and down depending on how thick I want to plane the piece of wood. So I'm going to use machine bolts to minimize the wear and tear as I loosen and tighten these screws over time. Here's one of the side rails that I routed these three slots so that I'll be able to adjust the position of the fence. Let me show you how I made these. This is my one time use jig that I made. I'll be throwing it away as soon as I finish uh, routing these three slots. It's just made from some scrap beadboard and lying around the shop. And uh, I sized this slot so that it perfectly fits the side rail. And I have to really press it to get it in here so it won't move. I don't have to worry about uh, clamping it in the jig. And of course the top is, is configured so that the router can only it's constrained, you can only move in the direction of the slot. Of course, I could have made these slots many different ways with a lot less effort than this, but um, I wanted them to look, to look nice, and sometimes it's just uh, worthwhile to go through the extra effort. And it gives me practice making jigs such as this, which I think it's a good good skill to hone in your workshop. Side rails are complete. Before I start assembling it, I need to add one more piece, and that's going to be these um, additions. These will be what constrain the plane within this uh, jig. So I'm just going to attach those with uh, some some screws. I've used my combination square to position the retainer strip on my uh, side rail. That looks good. Now I can use my uh, transfer punch to locate where I'm going to drill. All 
Okay, for these I'm just going to use my hand drill and I'm drilling over my dog hole. Okay, I'm almost ready to assemble this, but one last thing I need to construct is the stop. And I'm just going to use, this is a bit long right now, but this is going to be secured on this end with a slotted, uh, slotted hole. So I'll be able to adjust how high I want the stop to be. So I'm going to, I'm going to drill a a tapped hole like it did on these, these sides and use a machine screw to secure it. Well it's not too often I get to make use of my full drill press but I'll need it in this situation. And I'm using a wood clamp to uh, stabilize everything. Okay, I've predefined my um, rectangle with uh, the chisel, drilled out much of the waste, and I'll just finish up with the chisels. Okay, slot is complete. Cut this to length and uh, assemble the jig. Okay, it's time to give this a shot. So on use, just loosen these screws. I'm going to use this, uh, this is some eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. That's going to be the thickness of some material I want to plane. So I'll just stick that under there. Of course, you, if I wanted one sixteenth inch, so I'd just make a one sixteenth inch spacer. Tighten it down and I'm um, good to go.
beautiful, just as I had hoped it, it was going to work. Now I can make very accurate, repeatable small parts for my uh, small boxes. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, thanks for stopping by.